Morning folks, Todd Coburn from Cal Poly Pomona, Arrow 4080. This time we're talking about Nastran C-Bar cards. And what we're talking about is how to orient the forces and the moments. It's all in the definition of the card. The order in which you specify nodes 1 and nodes 2 of the C-Bar, and then your reference node, which is called out either as another grid point or as a vector. Here's how it works, a little excerpt from our Zaffa session today. Watch it closely, and this should clarify if you're still not quite getting that. Enjoy. When you're using a okay. C-Bar, what you're going to do is you're going to call out, you're going to create your grid points, and then you're going to, let's say you have a bar going from grid point 5 to grid point 6. Uh, and mm, that means this is your bar, and it's defined with an X that goes like this, right? Now the question is, which is the bending planes? Now what you're going to do is call out any point. So let's say we're in, uh, let's say we're in a space dimension like this, okay? And let's say that we call out, uh, so let's say this is, uh, let's just call out the global, make this the global, oops, the global X direction, the global Y direction, and the global Z direction just for fun. And your bar goes from five to six. We'll call this bar one. Now, in order to do the bending planes, you're gonna have to call out either another point, like let's say you have a point 10 over here, and a point 11 over here, a point 12 over here, and a point 13 over here. So one method is to call out uh, another grid point. So when we call out our C bar card, we're going to have an element ID. We call this bar one. We're going to have, you guys can see what I'm writing, right? A property ID, we'll use one there. You're going to have grid point ID, which is in this case five, and then your second node six. And now you've got choices, okay? Our first choice is to actually put a grid point here. So our first choice, let's say we put in a 10. If we put in 10 in that field, then that defines the other vector this way. That means that this is your plane one bending. And that means your moment, your moment uh, one, your V1 will be going in the positive direction like this. This is V1. Your moment will be like this. That's M1. That's what that means. And of course, all the corresponding things. Let's say instead we had put in. 12 as that third point. That's, it's an integer. It's going to see that as this point down here. That defines this as your Y, and this is your bending plane, which means this is your V1, and this is your M1. Let's say instead you don't use a grid point at all. Let's say instead what you do is you say uh, 0, 1, 0. 0. 0.1.0. 0. 0. If you did that, that will define a vector like this as your y. And now this is your plane 1, which means this is your v1, and that is your m1, and so on throughout. Let's say instead you say, okay, we're going to do uh, 0, comma, 0, comma, 1. That means you've defined a vector like this, and now this is your plane 1, which means this is V1, and this is M1. So it's different ways of doing the same thing. Let's say instead you call out uh, 0, 1, 1. That means now 
one, one, excuse me, one, one is your vector. Now you've defined a skew plane like this such that your shear is off in this wacky direction and so is your moment. That's how you use the C-bar card and that is what it does. Comprende? Oh, let's, that makes say, sense. let's say instead, let's say instead you call out one, zero, zero. Now what that means is your vector goes like this. It's along this same axis, which means your Nastran run is going to fail because now you've defined a singularity it has no idea of what to deal with. So how does this work in real life? Well, let's say that we have a fuselage and let's say that we decide to use bars for our stringers, which I don't recommend. I recommend using rods. So let's say you call out this node to this node and then the third node at the center, what that will do, will define your little vector like this. And that means all of your V1 will be normal uh, your V1 and your M1 is going to be uh, aimed toward the center. So all of them will be perpendicular. All your, your moment ones will be perpendicular to the skin. That is actually a powerful way of doing it because now all of the vectors, all of the bending ones will now be pointed inward. They'll all be normal. The other way of doing that would be, have, had, would be to calculate with that bar Take your next point is this one back here, which calls out this, and now this is your V1. The problem with that is now you have a different reference node for every single bar. So actually it's a little more powerful to use the center of your fuselage as your thing. So now, in fact, what you can see here, if you use one, this is your node, one goes here, excuse me, goes here, Node two goes there, and then your third node being right here at the center. So at this frame, if this frame is at fuselage station 500, then this is at that zero point, right? And then your next frame would then reference the center of that spot. And the next frame would use the center of that spot. What you don't want to use is use the same one back here. All these reference here, that will cause even more skew value. But what you'll see now is the plane for all these will be like this. Therefore, your V1 will be like this, and your M1 will then be in the perpendicular direction based on the X, Y coming this way for your shear and moment. So that's how you use the bar command and define the properties. Okay, yeah, that makes plenty of sense now. So it just defines your, like your V1 out of like V2, V3. Yeah, remember in your the video, I told you guys to go and make one of these puppies. Yeah. yeah. So that you can okay. see what your node one is, and your node two is, and however you specify this node, whether it's a node or a vector. Now I show it a kind of off your skew, which also defines this plane, but actually that's bad practice. What I normally do is make it perpendicular to the bar at the first end. I'll pick a point that's perpendicular in the direction I want to define that plane. And you gotta watch out. This confused me when I was a young pup in industry using Nastran and in my classes right before there is that uh, normally we talk about a section and we talk about the bending i x is the bending about this axis right i x yep. so for a moment like this we'd be comparing it to i x in Nastran what we're dealing is, is the planes in which bending occurs so the that first plane is the plane in which the moment happens, not the plane about which the moment happens. Do you understand that? Gotcha. So, so it will be like uh, perpendicular to what we learned by hand. So hand, it's flat, straight on. Well, Nascon, it's on the same plane. Right, kind of because with hand analysis, we're talking this is our moment, so we're needing the I that resists that. But in Nastran, the way it's defined is you're defining the plane and in which that first moment happens, in which that moment happens. It's in the plane rather than about the plane. Yep. Okay. So I hope that helps to understand 
how to define your bars so that you have so you understand what direction your shear and moment forces are in the bar. Enjoy.